90 years ago, if we were standing in this very spot in front of my house, my great-great-grandfather would have been a very nervous man because 150 angry, protesting men were standing right here. In 1917, the Hildebrand family, who was known for raising world-class purebred horses in the middle of Iowa, they would sell them all across the country. They would win ribbons at fairs. They'd be work horses out in the field. If you had a Hildebrand horse, you were someone of importance. They accumulated so much success through their purebred horses, they were able to build what was considered one of the most luxurious homes in the state of Iowa, if not one of the most luxurious homes in the entire United States of America. That's right, I am talking about this house, this exact house. Now my last name is not Hildebrand, so how in the world did I get here? The Great Depression of the 1920s and 1930s left a devastating financial wake for millions of Americans, and the Hildebrands were not an exception. This is a newspaper article that I found about the house from 1933. This is 90 years old. After six days of labor by 35 or 40 men, eight or 10 trucks, and a caterpillar, the job of removing the machinery, grain, hay, household goods, etc., from the Hildebrand farm southeast of town was completed Tuesday night at a cost of around $1,200. 1933 dollars are not equivalent to 2023 dollars, so in order to do that, we need to take the 1933 dollars and multiply them by 45. There were six grain separators, hay baler, cement mixer, seven plows, including one with 13 bottoms, corn husker, corn planter, potato digger, two corn shellers, clover holer, five cars. It is perhaps true that no such an aggregation of machinery was ever collected on an Iowa farm 120 acres before. The ejection was not without its thrills. The crowd of men, estimated at 150, looked for a time as if it might be frustrated by members of the farmers' union and others who assembled on the farm, but after it was explained that it was not a mortgage foreclosure, that the farm had been sold on foreclosure two years ago and rented the past year by the Hildebrands, that it had been sold last year to Ernest. Possession to be given March 1st of this year. Mr. Ernest then offered to turn the farm back to the Hildebrands if they would pay him $7,000, the amount he had in it. They made an effort to raise the amount, and it is understood did get between five dollars and $6,000 in sight. The Hildebrand homestead was one of the show places for many years, the parallel of which could not be found in the county. It has practically all the modern conveniences of a city hotel, there are 12 or 14 rooms, nearly all with hardwood floors and finish. Town people claim the electric light plant installed cost $1,000. But mind you, this was before the grid came out here because my grandfather, who was born in 1939, said when he was a little boy walking to the one-room schoolhouse that there was German prisoners of war that were actually setting the posts in the ground for the electricity lines to be hung from. So that would have been in the mid-1940s. So in 1917, a generator was used to supply full electricity for this house almost 30 years before the electrical power grid <laughs> was here. The earnest individual in that newspaper clip was my great-great-grandfather who lived in a house right across the road. So when they bought the property, they offered to sell back to the Hildebrands if they could come up with $7,000. The Hildebrands did not come up with the $7,000. So then the rest is history. My great-great-grandfather moved over here. And then when my great-grandfather came along as a farmhand and met my great-grandmother, who was the daughter of my great-great-grandfather who bought this house, my great-grandfather moved in here. And then that's where he started the farm. From there, my grandfather was born right where I'm sitting, actually. And then my dad was raised in this house. Now here I am. So back in the day, the Hildebrands spent some serious cash on this place. So why am I tearing everything out? Mm -hmm.
Now this is the sad part. I guess it could potentially be exciting. Well, it is exciting. This house has knob and tube wiring. So this is knob and tube wiring. It's super sketchy. It's considered to be one of the most dangerous wirings you can have in a house and it's <laughs> really known for catching houses on fire. One of these wires must have melted inside one of the walls somewhere because we have absolutely no electricity on the whole top half of the house. So upstairs, no electricity works at all. The upstairs bathroom developed some leaks inside the walls with the water pipes and it completely ruined all of the inside of the plaster down below. After a series of storms that damaged the roof, water got in the attic and it leaked through the upstairs ceiling and it did a whole bunch of water damage. Especially in this room because the whole closet ceiling was just covered in black mold. This room on the corner and this back room also have no heat inside of them. They have radiators, but for some reason they were never hooked up. And conveniently enough, the two rooms that do not have heat in them have insulation that is falling down inside of the walls. And if we look closely, we can actually see gaps of light, like right there, that shine perfectly outside. You can see there's been a little bit more water damage right there. So as beautiful as the house is and as much history and rich heritage that is involved in the, the very ground that I'm standing on right now, at the end of the day, the house is starting to fall apart in areas. It's extremely impractical to use because just of how they laid out rooms in 1917 is completely different than how we live in houses now. The electricity doesn't work upstairs. Downstairs where it does work, you're worried about plugging like a phone charger into something because you don't want a wire to melt behind the wall and burn the house down. So we're very limited on what we can use electricity downstairs. The upstairs gets, well, the whole house in general gets cold in the winter time and it's not uncommon to have a $400 per month heating bill. And I plan on living here the rest of my life. So I want to be able to utilize all of this space, and then for future generations to come. So my goal is to turn this $7,000 house that was an absolute gorgeous mansion, luxurious beyond belief back in its day, and turn that into a $700,000 house. So we can turn that glorious, luxurious mansion of 1917 up to modern day standards. It's gonna be incredible. It's gonna be a journey. It's gonna be a lot of fun. This is a little embarrassing because I started demolishing the inside of my house over a year ago and it's literally been sitting in this exact form the entire time. The floor has been absolutely filthy. We got lath all over the place. I think there's a couple birds that are permanently sleeping up here. Those are where my gym shorts went. You know when you're sitting there in the house and the sun is just coming through a window just right and you can see the beam coming just right through and you see all the little dust floaties in the air and stuff and you're like, wow, I breathe that in every single breath. Well, the other day I was sitting there inspecting one of those light beams coming into the house and somebody opened the door outside and it was fairly windy out at the time too. And as soon as they opened the door, you could feel the pressure change inside the house. And then my little spindly little puffs of dust that were in the air all of a sudden it was just like the whole stream was just dust wow that is probably terrible for my lungs and it's a thousand percent due to the fact that my house has looked like this on the upstairs for the last year or better and down there as well which we go through that door when we need to get food out of the freezer, which is hiding back there. And then my bedroom is right on the other side of that door. I literally live right on the other side of that. So for the sake of my health and my family's health, and for the sake of we want to get this house finished at some point, we really need to get this stuff cleaned up. So that is what we're gonna be doing today. One little quick thing, if you enjoy my content and you want to help support the channel, the very best thing you can do is just watch the video all the way through. Thank you. We have the dumpster hiding right outside the window. I believe our plaster is horsehair and the insulation is rock wool, but nonetheless, it's an incredible amount of dust. So we are gearing up in these P100 masks with the full face covering. Absolute lifesaver. It also keeps a lot of dust out of your eyeballs.
Next up on the project, we are gonna go down there. I'm not really excited about doing this, mainly because it's right off my kitchen, but this door is locked for some reason, locked from the inside. I think there's a little button configuration on the inside. Someone accidentally pressed that, and now this is locked. I can only open it from the other side. The door on the outside of the porch is locked, so I cannot get in from there either, so I only have one other option, and that is to go right through my living room. On the other side of this door. Oh, I just got this door taped shut. Ah, there we go. We gotta figure out how to open that door with all that stuff in the way. So that way I can throw everything in the dumpster on the other side of that door. That is not what I wanted to do. Oh, that tape might hold better than I think. After eight hours of working up there, I'd say that's not too bad for dust. We got a little bit here in the living room. There was nothing under that door to be able to stop. It blew out to about there, but the middle of the room not looking too bad. We got all the bulk of everything done up here. All the big stuff is out of the way, picked up, thrown out. Looks a lot different now that we can actually see the floor. We are gonna be ripping out all of this hardwood floor. So that's why I really don't care that it's all dirty and had all the bunch of junk and stuff on it. Cause it's not gonna be here in the long run because we're gonna be tearing out walls and stuff here in these rooms, this room, these two rooms. So these parts of the floor won't match up with the wood anyway, so that would look really weird. So we're just ripping out all the floor. I need you. Yo necesito este bucket. Yo necesito este whatever you wanna call that. Oh I do not have room. To bring you guys in there right now, so I'm gonna try to clear out a little spot in the door so I can actually get the door open so then I can go out on the porch and throw everything out in the dumpster. I was able to clear a little spot right there. I got the dumpster just right out there on the skid loader forks. We've already filled up two dumpsters. Waiting for something to get to me. I wasn't sure what I was hoping for, you see. Oh boy, oh boy. Hello. We have the hard part done, which is getting everything all up off the floor. I can just imagine how the house feels right now. It just has to feel like it lost like 10,000 pounds because two dumpsters of plaster, just all the stuff laying on the side, literally two dumpsters, four cubic yards. That is a lot of bucket fulls and that's a lot of these fulls. We got all the big stuff out. Great, it's looking a lot better, but it is still extremely messy in here. And if we get a little bit of breeze when somebody opens the door, all this dust laying on the ground, just right up into the air. And that's the whole point of us getting everything cleaned up. Well, it needed to be cleaned up anyway, but we really wanna get the dust out of the house. So now we have the really fun part. <laughs>
yes, this is official construction guy clothing. Very official. Take a look. That looks significantly better and significantly different. It looks like we have a significant way to go. Bottom of the stairs. Looking good down here. We can't shut that door right now because that black wire that runs in is our ethernet line. So if we shut that door, we don't have internet. The next part of this project is going to be really hard. Really, really hard, really time consuming, and really dusty and probably really not so a lot of fun, but it is going to be so worth it. And we're gonna have a beautiful house once we get it done. Put on your imagination cap for a minute. We're gonna need some imagination to put all these ideas into fruition. And our adventure for what starts next begins in the attic. The cold, cold, barn smelling. I'm surprised there's not birds around flying here. Attic. There's a couple holes somewhere where these birds are still getting up in the attic and I don't know where they're coming from, but they're really annoying. I better shut the door down there so they don't go flying in the house. Living with birds in the attic is not a good thing. And they're making a ginormous mess. This is actually kind of disgusting. Oh, oh, I think I found where they're coming in. We have snow up here. That's not good. Light shining through right there. There's a piece of softening over here that got blown down like that far. And it must be just enough of a little gap. The birds can get up in there. They get in here and then they can't get out. Anyway, anyway, anyway. The attic. We need to start up here. This little knee wall, I don't even know what you'd want to call this thing, but how that is supporting the roof is beyond me. I don't know. We need to get the structural components of the attic redesigned. So these walls coming down that are coming to these things that are literally, I don't know how that's holding up everything. They need to be rebuilt. I am planning on meeting with a professional to help us get something designed for the remake up of this because we want this attic to be a finished space. I kind of put together a little design. This is gonna be like a little kind of cinema hangout area. This middle space will be an open, I don't really know kind of area. Some cool thing with games, lots of room to play. We have unlimited possibilities with the room. This room's like 32 feet long and probably like 12 foot wide of usable space. We got all kinds of all kinds of room for activities. In this north part, I would like to wall off, have some sort of like recording studio over here. Neva really likes music and if we had a soundproof area where we could do it, just a, a creative space that's away from people where you can just sit and think, you'd have a beautiful view of everything going on over there in the grove. This also would not make a bad deer hunting blind. So step number one is to get someone to help us design how this needs to be real, be rebuilt so that way it's strong and that way it's going to actually be functional because we want to maximize as much space up here as well because these walls come down. We don't want to just like build a wall right here and then just be not utilizing any of that. Down the road when Neva and I have a family and then all the other family brings their kids over, we want it to be like, you know, when you're little and you had that one family member's house that you'd go to and you just had so many cool memories there. They just had like a cool space in their house where all the kids got to hang out and the parents were doing other things downstairs. Like that's what I want this place to be like. So in all honesty, this is probably going to be more like the kid dream room, dream house kind of thing. We even have a bunch of room up there. We could make like a loft and have like a second story part to it. So while things are being designed, we need to get this cleaned up. We need to get those holes sealed so birds cannot get into here. I do plan on ripping up all this wood since it's been pooped on by birds for so long and stuff. It just has like that, smells like a barn in here. And I, I don't want the temperature to be just right in here one day. And then like that smell just kind of comes out from the woodwork. And once we get it cleaned up, get it redesigned, rebuilt, then we're gonna insulate it up here. There's no insulation whatsoever. Right on the other side of that plywood, is tar paper, and the other side of that tar paper is shingles. And that brings us to underneath this floor, which is the ceiling of the upstairs. This has insulation inside of it. So right now this is the exterior insulation to the house, and then the exterior walls 
also contain insulation. When it's all said and done, all of this lath is going to be coming off and then we are going to spray foam everything just like these rooms. We just won't be doing all the ceilings like this room has. It'll just be what the roof is and then there will be nothing between here. Maybe some sound deadening barrier and stuff, but there will not be insulation in the ceiling. It will just be in the attic and then we'll have a full enclosed space. The only reason why these rooms are insulated on the ceilings is because I got a little bit ahead of myself and I tore the insulation down and then winter set in and I didn't have any insulation. I did not want to have like a thousand dollar per month heating bill. So we insulated. Here's the slight dilemma that we're running into right now. First off, we got to get the attic done first. So that way that can be insulated. But then secondly, even if we had the attic done right now, we cannot do the spray foam insulation because the spray foam insulation, I believe it needs to be above 45 degrees on what you're spraying it onto in order for it to fully stick. If it's colder than that, it could work. It could maybe not work the best. So we want that to seal as well as possible. So we just have to wait for it to warm up a little bit, but we have plenty of work to do upstairs in the meantime, so I'm not worried about that. That's why we can't be doing that right now. Otherwise we could just rip off all these exterior walls up here, get them spray foamed, and then we would just have the ceiling to take care of later. But also that Rockwell insulation dust is incredibly fine. So if we did all the exterior walls, got them spray foamed, then when we went to go drop the ceiling insulation down, the spray foam is kind of a, a little porousy. And I feel like that insulation dust would just sit right to this and it would be impossible to clean. And it's just tiny little fibers. So it, we'll just do one big mess at once. Now since down that imagination cap, cause we got a little bit of imagination to put together from the edge of this door over, this wall is going to stay. This is a load bearing wall. Our ceiling joists run this direction. So these two hallway walls do not have any actual structural weight on them. So these are not load bearing, but all the ones that run this direction do. What I want to do is tear down this whole wall, then tear down that back wall, the back closet. This So this will be one big open room. I want this area to be kind of a commons room because there's going to be a room over there. And there's going to be a room over here. And then when we build the new garage addition, Outside of these windows, there's going to be another room that's hiding over here. So then this big space, we'll have a, a couch here or a table or something. And it, just an area where family can hang out, an education space, learning space. It's kind of a neat central environment. Maybe if you don't want to be hunkered down in your room or something and you, you want to do something as a family activity, cool spot for it. Or if one kid's hanging out upstairs with their friends doing something and they don't want to be bothered, then another kid can come down here and they can do their thing with their friends. Cause I'm sure someday there's going to be like 12 of our kids' friends running around here at any given point. My favorite room, the North room is going to become a mega room. That wall is going to be coming down. That is not a load bearing wall. So we'll be able to knock that bad guy right out. And then this is just going to it's just going to keep going. That closet is going to be staying in association with this room. That door is going to be disappearing though. And then what used to be the walk-in closet is going to be expanded upon. This wall is going to come out to here, about to here or so. And this is going to be a bathroom with a shower, toilet, and the sink. From the hallway, this will be walled off. This will be the only entrance into the room. And then this will just be a wall. So that won't even be there, It'll just be one door. And this closet will be one big closet. And honestly, we'll probably just build from this wall right over. So then this little spot will just be kind of like a, maybe a little hidey spot in the closet or something. This room has an incredible view and it also has the ability to climb on top of the porch. And in the west room, which used to be the biggest bedroom upstairs, this room is going to have this closet sealed off. So this is just going to be wall. And then everything is going to be continuing this way. We probably going to leave this wall because what we're gonna do is build a walk-in closet and a bathroom over here, full bathroom, full walk-in closet. It's gonna be kind of compartmentalizing this area. Then this is going to be a hallway through here. So we'll have a hallway along this exterior wall out yay far. And then this kind of in-between space will be the full bath and the walk-in closet. But what's gonna be neat, bedroom's gonna be over there. 
They'll have a walk-in area through this in this hallway. We're gonna build another set of stairs right here. On the other side of that insulated wall is the landing for the attic. So they'll have their own private back access up into the attic. I think that's kind of cool. Every room has its pros and cons. So where one room has a con, like this one's gonna have a small closet in it and it's gonna kind of be over on side. It's got a really cool view and it's gonna be a big room. This room is gonna be quite a bit smaller just for the fact that there's not gonna be like a neat area for a desk to stick off on the side or anything, but it's gonna have that back access up into the upstairs. And then we're gonna build a hallway right here over into the new part. There's actually going to be two rooms there, one more bedroom and then a spare room, but we're not that far yet. We'll discuss that once we start getting some plans designed for over there. I've been drawing some stuff up in a computer-aided drafting thing, but we don't have anything permanently set in stone yet. But we're getting some tentative ideas. These rooms, I think, the ideas that I just went through are going to be what we are going to do. Are really close to that just depends on you know maybe some tight little fits in the room here or there or if stuff maybe fits better on this wall or that wall but they're both gonna have a full bath they're both gonna have walk-in closets they're both going to be very large rooms our next steps are going to require a lot of planning so i need to get together with some professionals we're going to be getting some actual designs put together so that way when weather's good and it's go time we can actually start implementing these projects and getting this house done I've been living in a war zone for long enough, so it'll be nice living in a nice clean home that's configured and put together and not full of dust every time you open the wrong door. Thank you so much for watching the video all the way through. If you like this video, chances are you'll like these videos. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.